Section six of One by Crime. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. One by Crime by Frank Pinkerton. Chapter three, part two. Some distance from the Jew's shop, he bade Miriam adieu, promising to call and let her know the result. On reaching Don Garcia's palace, Denise was surprised at the sounds of bright music mingled with happy voices that floated on the air. Satsavan was the first to meet him, and he went forward with a welcoming smile. Where is Leonor? Denise asked anxiously, glancing round the deserted halls. In the grounds, Don Garcia has his home full of guests in honor of his daughter's betrothal with Manuel Tonza. Leonor betrothed, and to him, in consternation, Yes, sadly. Her father has commanded her to accept him, and since she lost poor Falcom, she is indifferent whom she weds. But Tanza, above all other men? Bitterly. With a dark shadow on his brow, Denise followed the young Indian into the spacious grounds, where Leonor, surrounded by many richly dressed ladies, was sitting. I cannot speak to her before all these people. Go, Satsavan, and bring her to me. The youth darted off obediently, and presently returned to the tree where Denise stood almost hidden by its shady branches, leading Leonore, whose face wore a look of some wonder. "'Denise, is it really you? Have you brought me any news?' she asked eagerly. Sampayo took her outstretched hand and kissed it reverently. "'Yes,' he said softly. "'Good news. What is it? Tell me. I have discovered the man who I think struck the blow by instigation of the real murderer.' Until he is taken, I can do nothing further. But who is he? How did you find him? He is of poor fisherman, named Jerima, and it was through a young Jewess, Finney's grandchild, to whom the poignard was sold, I found him. That was very good of her, to help you. It was, indeed. The whole morning she has searched with me for the man, and at last our labor was rewarded. Tomorrow Jerima will be under arrest." As the words left his lips, a sudden movement amongst the trees startled them. "'I am sure that was some one,' Leonor cried, turning pale and clasping Denise's arms. Satsavan glided noiselessly away, but soon returned to say that no one had passed by. Possibly the noise was occasioned by the wind rustling through the leaves. "'Very likely,' Leonor said quietly, though it made me nervous. "'Suppose anyone overheard us.' Rest assured, dear, that nothing now can come between me and my revenge. But, Leonor, is it true you are betrothed to Tanza? Yes, Denise, it is true. Papa has commanded me to accept him. I hate him, but now poor Louise is dead, I care not who becomes my husband, hopelessly. I wish it were other than Tanza, Leonor. I cannot trust him, nor will I believe, but what he had a hand in Louise's death. That is what I think, but Papa says it is only fancy. Manuel is too upright to do such a treacherous thing. A silvery laugh broke suddenly on the silence which had fallen between them, and Savitre, leaning lightly on Pantaleon's arm, stood before them. The Raja's young widow made a strange contrast to Leonor, gay with rich colors. Judging from Pantaleon's ardent gaze, he at least saw some beauty in the dusky, changing face. What, Sampayo? I did not know you were here, the young man cried gladly, seizing Denise's hand in a warm grip. Have you brought good news? Yes, better than I expected, Denise answered, and briefly recounted the success which had attended his morning's search. I do not wish to meet your father to-night, Leonore, until this business is settled. I could not enter into any amusement. First I will go to see Henrique Ferreira, the magistrate, and arrange with him about Jerima's capture. "'But you will come to-morrow. You will not—' "'To tell me the result?' Leonor asked anxiously. "'Assuredly, unless anything serious prevents me.' "'Thank you,' she murmured gratefully. A kind hand-pressure from all, and Sampaio walked quickly away, while Leonor, her heart somewhat lightened by this news, returned to her father's guest with Satsavan. Savitre would have followed, but Pantaleon held her back with a few whispered words, and nothing loath, the little widow sauntered with him through the shady grounds, apart from the rest. Savitre, Leon said suddenly, would you be willing to leave your country, to go with me to Portugal? Savitre gazed at him in some wonderment. Surely you are not thinking of leaving India, she cried, a sudden anxiety dawning in her dark eyes. 
Yes, my father wishes me to return, and as soon as Leonore is married we are going. The girl remained silent. Only a few pearly tears rolled down her cheeks. St. Peter, dearest one, do not weep. Would it be so dreadful to you to quit the country? It is not that, with a stifled sob, but I had not thought of your leaving us, or the friendship between us being broken. Nor will it, my darling. Don't you understand? I love you too dearly to give you up. I want you to be my wife, so that none can part us. Say my hopes are not all in vain. A vivid flush mantled the clear, dark skin, and the lustrous eyes drooped in confusion. You really mean that? You love me, a girl who is not even of your own kind? I love you with all my heart and soul. Ever since the day when I drew you half fainting from off the already lighted pile, I have felt my affection growing deeper and deeper, until it has absorbed my whole being. My happiness is never complete unless I am near you. Tell me, darling, that you return my love. How could I help but love you, you who saved my life? Oh, Leon, you cannot think how proud I am at being chosen by you before all others. With a joyous exclamation, Pantaleon drew her to his breast, pressing passionate kisses on her brow, cheeks, and lips, his heart thrilling with rapture at the realization of his dreams. End of section 6